Good morning, folks. We're at spaceweathernews.com, and the solar flaring is low. This is due to a sunspot situation that is even more pitiful than it appeared yesterday. The only eruption of note is a small filament snap and CME off the eastern limb, not a large eruption, and not Earth-directed. The top eruption threats are actually plasma filaments. Got them coming in on both the north and the south. These will be in position to become geo-effective by tonight. Jumping over to the solar wind to see the speed in yellow finally dropping out. The magnetic disruption from this solar wind intensity was much more than expected, and the weakening of the magnetosphere is my best possible explanation. We've now seen larger than expected effects from moderate to minor solar activity quite a few times. If you haven't caught up on how our systems are changing, check out magneticreversal.org, linked below. We have an equatorial coronal hole coming in, the dark blotch seen here in 211 angstroms. It's not terribly large or strong, but combined with the four-way lineup of Mars, Mercury, Earth, and Pluto, we may see some increased seismicity in the coming days. Thus far, we have seen only some Earth spots and moderate upticks in unusual locations. For example, out of the 10 earthquakes to hit this area of the southern Middle East in the last 30 days, six of them happened yesterday. Another interesting feature to this earthquake is one of the strangest pressure patterns I've seen in a while. The low pressure versus high pressure dividing line is right along the fault line that began shaking yesterday. One side gets a good push down, the other has pressure alleviated from it. After yesterday's remarks about the volcano and nearby Earth spot, we indeed have more quakes building in Mexico. The tropical system is dancing up the coastline now. It is one of two in the East Pacific. The West Pacific has two systems as well. Tracks are somewhat variable, but if you're looking to do it, I recommend heading over to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. The top story of the day, once again at Pluto. More impressive than the strange surface features is the upgrade of Pluto's official size. It is bigger than scientists thought it was, and it is icier than they thought as well. They thought it was 75% water ice. Turns out, the ice ball is a bit more pure. Next story comes from the chemistry world. Two carbons, two oxygens. A flurry of incredible claims about the possibilities for the future and a pretty good story about how they got there. I was going through the Ceres gallery yesterday and noticed that the bright spots are not the only color and brightness based anomalies to be seen. Perhaps the famous bright spots are merely clustered versions of what can be seen more widely spread. We'll keep our eyes on it. Coming to a tropical storm named off the east coast of the US which will hit eastern Canada soon. But until then, the story is on land. The energy coming north from the Gulf is dropping terrible storms along the convergence lines and will do so again tonight. The southern air meets a wall from the north and they have a bit of equilibrium to find between them. Major windstorms and tornadoes are possible with lightning and flooding a certainty for millions of people. Same area in Europe under the gun if the pressure doesn't move, neither will the storm clouds and rain and it will continue coming east as well. Jumping down to Australia and New Zealand, find a low pressure cell taking on the eastern islands as we speak. Weather shares are appreciated. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe everyone.